Hello, everyone. Um, so follow that then. Um, so consistently today, one of the great things has been hearing and reaffirming the importance and the evidence for long-term brand building to build you know, sustainable revenues, profitable growth. I mean, Les has just talked extremely eloquently and convincingly about the importance of pricing power and how brand building drives strong pricing power in the market. So all of that you know, really you know, underlines the importance of you know, getting the balance right. But you know, it's hard. You know, that we've talked about it, I think it's inherent from the questions that we had through that pressure to meet you know, immediate revenue goals, yeah, even though we know and have proven the evidence of the importance of brand building to you know, long-term sustainable growth and profitability, it's hard to get that balance right. But as the saying goes, a problem shared is a problem halved. So what we're going to be doing in this session is really getting some practical experience in our panel uh, from some great brands like TSB and Virgin Media O2. So I'm going to get a range of perspectives today. So I'm going to kick off just with up to about 10 minutes of scene setting to get our juices flowing on this topic, even more so than the great content we've had today. Uh, Dom's then going to moderate a wonderful panel discussion um, with uh, Owen Jevons from TSB uh, and Ruth Pignall Jacquard, uh, Head of Planning, Insights and Effectiveness of Virgin Media O2. Um, so I was going to set some scene um, for you guys and start with a bit of a macro analysis and viewpoint actually. So this is a, a great uh, data point that I drew out from the brilliant Russell, uh, uh, Language of Effectiveness um, study from Marketing Week. Uh, and it demonstrates that just over 40% uh, of marketeers claim to work for companies that prioritise brand building or upweight their focus on brand building relative to performance marketing. Uh, and of course, I think you know Les and, and, and Peter Field's work itself you know demonstrates the need for you know to flex those rules to flex that balance. But it feels like 40% feels like maybe we're on a little bit of a precipice here uh, of effectiveness as we sort of face the headwinds and the challenges in the current economic climate. So a bit of a nice data point to kick off and think about our session now. And of course, this has never mattered more, right? So I think Lynn had some of this data earlier on with, uh, we talked about, you know, in recent years, there's been a crisis of effectiveness that's been heralded. We've seen work from, you know, University of Oxford side business school highlighting the reduction in the sales response of advertising. Um, you know, creatively, Peter Field's work showing you know, creatively awarded campaigns are perhaps you know, less effective uh, than they have been before. And we see also that you know, the stakes are building, and all of you guys know this, right? You know, investments are getting bigger. We're starting to see you know, wholesale shifts in behaviour towards prioritising channels you know, like digital. Now, of course, we know digital channels can build brands. You know, our own Kantar cross-media database indicates that you know, the brand building potential of digital channels is often actually underutilised, an opportunity there. But the perceptions and behaviour don't always follow suit in that regard. Risk and challenges potentially are building. And also, I think this is also manifested in a reduction in, in confidence. Uh, so from our Kantar Media Action Survey, uh, we see that marketeers claim to be you know, less confident in their media mixes compared to prior years, seven percentage points lower. And I, I think one of the challenges of getting the balance right between brand building and uh, sales activation comes from perhaps a, a lack of a, an integrated viewpoint. So, you know, 86% of marketeers, you know, champion and, and believe it's important to measure effectiveness in the short and long term, yet only 23% then claim to measure them in an integrated way. There's a gap. And that, of course, and you guys will, will relate to this, that's not the only sort of you know, data and insights gap on getting effectiveness right. But you know, we see that the, you know, the fault lines of effectiveness capability are you know, as wide as they are deep. Uh, and we're going to be diving into some of these topics in our panel discussion shortly. So, now, how do you just you know, really well, and I think iconometrics, of course, that's part of the answer here, but you know, how do you, you know, really identify commercial returns very clearly uh, to marketing activity? Now, how do you actually 
replace some of those metrics that may be or, or complements those metrics that are more you know behaviorally based and short term things like click through rates with you know short term measures because that's important to indicate progress but short term measures of long term outcomes how do you do that what are they how do we get leading indicators of pricing power of brand power all of those things of uh, long term sustainable demand generation for your brand you know building a unified picture you know breaking down silos in your organization it's not just about the data it's about the business as well. We're going to be diving into those topics. But, of course, you know, not all organisations are, are struggling to get this balance right. Absolutely, we see organisations that are doing it and brands that are getting this right. Uh, and what we observe uh, are sort of is that those companies are further up what we call the marketing effectiveness maturity curve, which is a concept that we've coined based on our experience of working with clients on effectiveness. So, you know... We're going to be returning and talking about this concept a little bit more in a moment, but essentially there are three broad stages. You know, just establishing the right data sources that that talk to not just you know short-term behavioural outcomes, but are leading indicators of, of brand growth uh, and, and brand building growth uh, that you can bring together brand health measurement, you know, creative quality, existing measurement on effectiveness. And the developed stage is when you really start to sort of bring those things together, right? When we can start to build into more holistic effectiveness engines that help us actually start to uh, unlock new outcomes. Just really good planning uh, around uh, media mixes that link to short and long-term outcomes, in-flight optimization, all of those things. Uh, and then the realized stage is sense that you've really bought sort of the fruits of that have been realized in the business with a, a culture of effectiveness. Uh, you know, a common language of brand value creation that runs through the business right the way from the, you know, CFO through to C-suite uh, and starting to unlock new continuous capability building around effectiveness. So this is sort of how we see aspiration in this space. And we're going to talk about some of the ways we can get there in our panel discussion. And why this matters, of course, is that the multiplier effects from getting all of this right are huge. So this is just some... Extract from Kantar data, actually, uh, and a few different of our databases that we have that show that all the way from you know, setting the right budgets, allocating media in the right way, you know, let's not forget about developing a great creative idea, optimising your creative content, optimising for channel for brand building as well as short-term sales effects and brand equity growth offer huge returns. So, um, before we leap into our panel discussion, um, there's a bit of good news in this, which is that it's technology is developing all of the time and it's becoming you know, easier to some extent, while well, it's still trying to answer some of these questions and get that balance right. So before we welcome our panel on stage, I'm going to show you a quick video and demonstrating some of the ways we're trying to help develop new approaches to get this balance right. <laughs> 